Hi guys, I'm Dr. Winnie Yu. I'm a physical therapist and you're tuning into Well and Good's Trainer of the Month Club. Today, I'm gonna to be taking you through some of my favorite moves to mobilize and stabilize your back pain. If you guys are experiencing any upper back stiffness, upper back pain, lower back stiffness, lower back pain, these are great moves to help mobilize the upper back, lower back, hips, and stabilize through that core and lower body stabilization exercises. So all you'll need is a mat for today's workout. Let's get started. So our first move today will be down on the ground. They're windshield wipers, super easy, very low key. Then we're gonna transition over to that quadruped tabletop position. We're gonna transition back to the mat. And the last thing will be standing up to do some of those lower body stabilization exercises. Let's get started. So the first thing I'm gonna have you do is you're gonna come down onto that mat. You're gonna lay on your back, hands will be by your side. Both feet will be bent, feet placed down on the ground, feet about hips width apart, and we're gonna slowly transition to either direction. We're gonna aim both knees down on the ground, hold for about a second here, and then transition to the opposite side. So I'm gonna have that left and right as one repetition. We're gonna go for 10 total here. So this is two and three to either side, and four and four five and five. And why this is one of my favorite exercises to do is if you think about the positioning of sitting all day at your desk or standing all day at work, some of those lower back muscles, some of those front hip muscles can get really tight. So if you do some of these lower, some lower spine rotations, it's a great way just to bring more blood flow and mobility to the area. The second exercise we're gonna do is figure four windshield wipers. So super similar in terms of setup. All you'll do is cross that right leg over the left, place that ankle at the top of that thigh, and again, rotate to either side. So if you feel any discomfort in that lower back, what I would say is just slow down the pace a little bit. You wanna aim the feet and that knee complex down towards the ground, nice and slow. We're gonna go for eight here. You should be feeling a stretch onto those lower back muscles, maybe a little bit onto that upper mid back area, but there should be no pain throughout the motion. This is five. We're gonna go for three more here and we'll do the same thing on the opposite side. So with each motion, try to go a little bit deeper into the range, right? Really try to aim those knees down towards the ground. We got one more here. Come on back to center, both feet down and let's cross on over. So again, this position, you might already feel a little bit of that stretch into the glute and that's all right. You can bring the leg a little bit closer if that's uncomfortable, or you can even step that foot closer if you feel any discomfort into that lower back, right? So we're gonna bring both legs down to the side. I got a nice little crack there. That's totally fine, totally normal, as long as it's not a painful crack, right? Things will move, things will shift, totally fine. So again, this is three. This is four and five. And I was just saying, if you do any of these exercises in your day-to-day -day mobility, right? This is something I would traditionally give to my client with low back pain. So you're coming through one of my first sessions as a physical therapist, welcoming you into my clinic, doing some of my favorite exercises that you can do as honestly part of your everyday day-to-day -day routine. This is the last one. And then I'll have you step on back to center. We're gonna go for one more round of quadruped exercises before we transition back to this position. So in this position, right, if you were experiencing back pain, I would have you first roll onto your side. So I don't want you to do a smooth transition. You can come onto your side in that side lining, push yourself up into that quadruped position. So in terms of quadruped, I would have you hands, elbows, and shoulders stacked into that even position. So you don't wanna be too far out or too far back. Right, your core is nice and activated. Feet are about hips width apart. Knees, again, stacked under that hip, right? Gently tuck the chin. So the biggest thing that I see with a lot of my clients is they're either here or they're really extended. You don't ever wanna crane through your neck. So if you think about where your neck, shoulders, and hips are, right? It's all connected. Everything is connected in that kinetic chain. So if you're here, right, that's gonna put more pressure into that lower back. So what you wanna do is be in a nice straight position core is activated, chin is gently tucked, hands are stacked, and we're gonna go into a few of those cat cows. So the first thing I'm gonna have you do is round through the spine, drop through the neck, push away from the ground, hold this position for about a second. 
You're gonna slowly transition into that arch position, look on up, reach the tailbone up towards the sky, hold this position for a second. We're gonna go for 10 repetitions here. Slowly drop on down, round through the spine, reach up the rib cage nice and tall towards the ceiling, and then arch again. So about one to two second hold at each position. Smooth and slow transition. You don't want any pressure being placed too far into the hands. Really, this is a spinal mobility exercise, bringing more blood flow to the muscles around the spine, bringing more blood flow to the joints and lubrication to those areas of the spine. We're halfway, we got five more here. Good. And breathe through it. You wanna take nice, big, slow breaths. This is still part of that warm up. Nothing should feel painful in this position. Last two. And last one. So from this position, I'm gonna have you guys place that hand behind the head, right? Think about your hand as a gentle cradle for the head. You never wanna yank through the neck as you're going to this position, right? Gently place the hand behind your head. You're gonna tuck the chin again, come into that tabletop position, and we're gonna drive that right elbow down towards the ground and reach up nice and tall towards the sky. Where the elbow goes, your eyes will follow. So never crane through your neck. So that's one. We're gonna go for eight here. And two. And three. And again, with every repetition, you wanna slowly ease into the movement. If there's any discomfort at the back or at the neck, right, don't go quite as far. This is a dynamic mobility exercise, so you never, ever, ever wanna crank or bounce at that end range. A lot of my patients will really try to push and pulse. Don't do that, right? Ease in with every repetition. Your joints are getting more lubricated. The muscles are getting more warm. And we'll reach up towards the sky. So we'll switch on over to that other side. But as I was saying, you never wanna crank or bounce within any of the repetitions. You wanna smoothly transition. And with every repetition, it's going to feel a little bit smoother. So if it's not available to you on that first rep, that's okay. By the eighth one, you should be feeling a little bit better. So hands behind the head again. Hands are stacked with that elbow and shoulder up in that straight alignment. And we're gonna drive down towards the elbow, reach up nice and tall towards the sky down towards the elbow, we're going for eight here. And breathe with each one, really open and inhale, exhale as you come back down. Perfect. We have three more here, guys. Squeeze through the core, so even though it's not a core exercise, there's always great ways to mobilize and stabilize the spine by understanding what proper core activation is and really protecting the spine in all motions. So from here, we're gonna transition back onto our backs, right? So same thing as before, we're gonna lay on down, feet will be bent, about hips width apart. The first thing I want you to focus on is that tunnel underneath that lower back, right? If I was to slide my hands underneath your back, there's a little tunnel, I can sneak into that other side. I want you to take that hand out, right? Really scoop that pelvis and not let me be able to poke underneath your lower back. So you, by doing so, right, how you do that, you can place your hands on your hips. If this position feels unfamiliar, right, think about scooping that pelvis up. So bring that belly button up towards your head and then really flattening every segment of that spine against the mat. From this position, you should feel a gentle activation through the core. A lot of people think of core exercise as those ab muscles, not necessarily true. We're thinking of activating through that transverse abdominus or through that deep stabilizing core muscle. From here, we're gonna lift one leg up, right? We're coming to, into that tabletop position on your back. Back is completely flat. As I lift up, I don't want you here. I want you really flat against the floor. Core is activated. I'm gonna have you tuck the toes up and you're gonna slowly tap one heel down back to the ground, the other one towards the ground, and you're gonna come on back to that 90-90 position. These are called supine heel taps, a really fantastic way to get that deep core muscle activation. We're gonna go for eight here. And again, right, none of these exercises are particularly difficult or particularly challenging, but I'm talking about someone with low back pain, something that you could easily mobilize and stabilize from the comforts of your home. 
And these exercises are meant to be in that early stage of that rehab. So if you're experiencing any pain with any of the motion, right, we can always regress. And if these are feeling super easy, you can always progress. So these are just the baseline exercises I would start with, but I can always progress or regress based on your current positioning or stage in rehab. So you got one more round here, right? And we're slowly lower down. We're gonna come on to that next exercise. So the next exercise we're gonna go into, right? Super simple, the supine bridges. Again, very easy exercise to get those glutes and hamstrings firing. Still wanna maintain this flat back position. So we don't wanna start here. We wanna think about flattening out that lower back first, right? Step two is squeezing through the core, right? So squeezing those butt off muscles together. Hands are gonna to be to the either side of you. Press through the heels and lift on up. So we're gonna slowly come back down and we're gonna go for 10 here, right? So super easy in terms of mechanism, but if you're experiencing any discomfort at the lower back here, there's a high likelihood you're letting your back go, right? And letting go of that core activation as you're coming up and down. So I really want you to think about squeezing through that core, squeezing through the glutes for the last three repetitions as you're coming up and down. Your core muscles and your glute muscles just start to feel a little primed up right now. We got two more and lower down. So we're gonna go into that second round of exercises here, right? Same position, back is flat, core is activated. We're gonna go for eight repetitions here. So same thing, maintain that back flat as you transition into that tabletop and heel tapping position. Your back should not lift with either one. You guys have three more here. You may start to feel your quads working a little bit. That's totally fine. These guys are trying to help stabilize as you're moving through that position. Perfect. And then again, feet will be placed flat down on the ground, flatten through the back, squeeze through the core, squeeze through the glutes. We're gonna lift up for 10. And if you feel like these are starting to become easier, there's always ways to make this harder. We can do things with a foam roller. You can place your feet up on a foam roller. You can do single leg variations and you can even do anything, right? That requires a hold. So I can have you do 10 of these and then just hold for, for example, 15, 20 seconds at that top position. All right. So from this position, we're gonna slowly transition up. If you don't really have crazy back pain, come on into standing. If you're uncomfortable, you can always come into that sideline before you come into that standing position. So from here, we're gonna stand on up, right? We're gonna come into some body weight squats. So feet are gonna be a little bit wider than hips width apart. Weight is into the heel, right? Hands will be on your waist and we're gonna sit the bum back. So we're gonna come into those squats and from the side, if you feel any discomfort at that knees or the lower back, something that I always tell my patients to do is think about folding in half. So if you put your hands on your hips, you wanna sit the butt back, right? Weight is still into the heels, right? We're not up here, we're not here. So I want you to think about driving through those heels, sitting the butt back towards your heels and then come on up. We're gonna go for 10 squats here. And the big thing I want you guys to focus on is even though it's not a core exercise, you can make it a really fabulous core exercise by stabilizing through that transverse abdominis like we did before. Perfect. We've got two more here. And then we're going to come on into those standing hip abductions. So the next exercise we're going to do is those standing hip abduction. You're going to shift your weight over to one side, core is activated, Weight is into those heels, right? You're gonna slightly hinge forward and we're gonna kick back. So the big thing here is really making sure that you have that core and glute stability as you're moving. You don't wanna be just squeezing through the glute, but then swaying your trunk to either side. By maintaining that front stability and that back stability, you get a nice stable brace, almost like a corset, right? To help stabilize that lower back as you're moving. One more, and then we're gonna shift the weight over to the opposite side, hinge forward. So again, we're sitting the butt gently back, right? Core is activated, glute is activated, and we're gonna kick back. This is two, and three, and four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. From here, we're gonna go one last final round of those squats, right? I really want you to think now, 
As you get comfortable with the motion, really try to go pick up the pace a little bit faster, slow on the way down a little bit faster on the way up. This is a great way to build up that power, start to warm up those muscles even more. We got three more here. Two and one, right? Last round of those standing hip abduction. The big thing here now is I think if you feel comfortable with these exercises, it's a great time to progress by placing a band around the ankle or even a band above the knees. By placing the band closer up towards the body, you actually get the benefit of a shorter lever arm, which means that you have less resistance. If you place it closer towards the ankle, it's a little bit harder, longer lever arm for those glute knee muscles to work through. So you can just progress simply by placing the band in different areas. Shift onto that other side, core is activated. We're gonna kick on back. So if you guys see me staring at something, right? I'm looking down this entire time because my secret trick here to moving and not falling over is to stare at something that's still, right? Because that helps the vestibular system gets in control. It helps the brain find that balance. And it just makes sure that you're not working extra hard to find that balance while you're on one limb. Thank you guys so much for joining me in today's workout. Again, I'm Dr. Winnie Yu, and this has been Trainer of the Month Club with Well and Good. If you guys enjoyed today's workout, I'll be doing another one next week. So don't forget to subscribe to tune in and join me um, for another really good physical therapy workout. Can't wait to see you guys.